they looked at us carefully. They saw we had shipped seven titles in a year, and they they said, hmm, let's think about that. And then they came back and they said, well, we don't really want to be your publisher, but we'd like to buy you. This Marquee Dragon video is sponsored by Shattered Crystal, game codes and items. Hello, I'm Marcus Eikenberry from MarqueeDragon.com, and I'm at the login conference today. And I've got somebody pretty special here. I've got Damon Sly. That's a really cool last name, by the way. Yep, well, that was my dad's last name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask for it, I just got it. Yep. So. <clears throat> So uh, tell me, uh, okay, it's Mad Otter Games, uh -huh. and, and you guys are working on a game right now that you kind of told me I can't ask about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, can, you, can, you can go to our, our website, madottergames.com, and there's some stuff about it there. Yeah. 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 Okay, super secret. Yeah, well, so. yeah, it's in a, it's in a state. We're, we're, we'll have a beta soon, so then, then we'll start talking oh, well. about it a lot. Yeah, well, you'll have to let us know. Definitely. So, um, so now, you mentioned something uh, before about when I asked you about some of the previous games that you've worked on. And you mentioned like Red Baron. Red Baron, yeah. That was probably uh, my favorite of the ones I worked on. It yeah, was really so, fun. so you're like a legend. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, because, I mean, to me, I was playing those games. I, I think you might be just a little bit older than me, I'm not sure. I'm 39. I'm 47, I think. Okay. You think, yeah, I, I have trouble figuring that out too sometimes. Um, but, uh, so I remember playing Red Bear and everything, and, um, and, and uh, honestly, I don't, I'm not sure that I bought it. I think maybe I downloaded it. Oh, okay. Back in the days okay. off of BBS. Okay. You yeah. know, that doesn't bother me. Red Baron did well, so I, I, that, that piracy doesn't bother me. There was a game I worked on at the beginning of my career, Stellar 7, which was probably in 1983, and um, it, it only sold about 3,500 units, mm -hmm. you know, which isn't very good. I'd worked for a year on it. And that one sort of, uh, uh, I was upset when that one got pirated. And um, I would put like a text file. Uh, there was light copy protection on it. I put a text file in there saying, "I'm just a kid working, you know, in mm -hmm. his garage." How old were you when you uh, when you made that game? I think I was uh, I was 18. I was okay. about 18, so I was really young. I had an Apple II. Uh, my parents didn't want me to buy an Apple II. They thought I should save all my money for college. But I had a passion to make games. It mm -hmm. was, you know, it wasn't really a thing back then, so they didn't know what it was about. But right. But so I, I built the game and I put a text file in there that said, you know, I'm just a, a kid working in his garage. Please don't pirate this. If you if you break the copy protection, you know, that's awesome that you're able to do that, but don't pirate it. And of course somebody did, and right. then they wrote their own letter. That about, was more like a dare, wasn't it? Yeah, I think they <laughs> took it as a dare. Yeah. yeah, anyway. That happens with so many applications. I remember the first time that, um, that we wrote an application, it was for a site called Free Game Cam, uh -huh. and we would uh, take the games people were playing and we'd capture a screenshot every 30 seconds and then broadcast it out on the site. Uh -huh. And so uh, our highest viewership, by the way, was like Monday morning at 9 a.m. You know, okay. When everybody's okay. at work wishing they were still playing games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is when most people would be viewing. <laughs> that's right. Um, it was a, it was a great, a great application. In fact, uh, that site's still around. But I remember the day when I saw that someone, and this is back in like 2000, someone had replaced our little copy protection that we had around the border of the images, and it was someone else's web address. Wow. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, so that's the day I found religion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. And I'm like, okay, I buy everything now, and yeah. I, I'm actually really anal about it. Yeah, me too. Stuff, yeah. so, um, you know, but that's, um, God, that was just so much history back then. I can't believe how bad I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, it's tempting. It's definitely mm -hmm. tempting, especially if you think something's overpriced or whatever. Yeah. So, what are some of the other titles that you worked on? Um, so, uh, Stellar Seven was was just me, and then I hooked up with a guy, Jeff Tanell, uh, probably in '84. Oh, we, you really are a veteran. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we founded Dynamics, and we were going to be a game developer and change the world. You know. Mm -hmm. um, well, first we were going to be a publisher, and we realized we were too small and we couldn't be a publisher. So. We, we, we contacted all the publishers and um, uh, we finally got a deal with Electronic Arts and um, they gave us a deal to build Arctic Fox on the Amiga. And uh, the Amiga was... The Amiga. God, I haven't heard the, about the Amiga in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was good it stuff. Did, it, it was exciting at the time. Trip Hawkins was evangelizing and he said it's going to change the world, you know. Um, it, was, it was pretty fun to work on, really good graphics compared to the Commodore 64. but. 
It was pretty much just a black box that we were working in a prototype. It was a black steel case. And the keyboard had a wooden case and this was spray painted black and there were wires coming out of it. And we, we programmed Arctic Fox for it. And then it went out and it did okay, but it didn't do very well. And a few months after that, Trip sent an email to his entire company saying, if you know 6502, start coding. So that was, the 6502 was the microprocessor and the Commodore 64 and the Apple II. So basically he oh. was saying the Amiga is not the way to go. After oh. he had told everyone it was the way to go. Yeah. So, well, but, hey, at least he was, he, he, he was good enough to, to reverse his, yes. you know, what he had said before, because that, that actually is a really valuable trait in yep. a person. That's the trait of a good entrepreneur. They can yeah. do a 180 really quick, and he re-engineered his whole company around, and they started making lots of money on uh, Commodore 64 titles. And yeah. we did too, so that was good. Um, cool. After that, we worked with, uh, we, did, we did some more titles for EA, and then we uh, started working with Activision for a little while. We did a bunch of games with, with them. Um, and I started deciding we were, didn't want to be on the developer treadmill anymore because uh, you just don't, it's really hard to get ahead as a developer, you know, because you don't own your IPs and you're behind on, on cash and everything like that with the publishers. Mm -hmm. And so um, we wanted to break out and get ahead of the game. And so we decided we'd become a publisher. And we uh, started, we're going to publish two of our own games as an affiliate with Activision. And so we did uh, A10 Tank Killer. And David Wolf's oh, Secret Agent. That. Yeah, that was our first. Yeah, yeah. and so um, we were doing that, but then we realized we still didn't have enough capital to really publish and market. You know, they were going to distribute, but it still was like we can't get. We're not going to be able to get it out there. At this point, we were talking with Sierra and Ken Williams, and we were saying Sierra was really big back then. Sierra was really. big. I mean, you saw their name everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, there was like yeah, four big companies, and Sierra was one of the one of the mm -hmm. ones back then. And we went to them and said, hey, maybe you guys want to be a publisher for us or publish our games or something like that. And they said, they looked at us carefully. They saw we had shipped seven titles in a year. And they, they said, hmm, let's think about that. And then they came back and they said, well, we don't really want to be your publisher, but we'd like to buy you. Oh. And so hmm. we sold Dynamics to Sierra. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me think about that. Uh, <laughs> what's the dollar amount? OK, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was hard at first because, you know. What, what's that like having a company purchased? Like that was was it a was it a great thing or when it was done did you feel bad or how'd you feel about that? It was um, it was hard initially emotionally to get our our head and our heart around the concept because we owned the brand we loved yeah. what we were doing yeah uh, we let um, so it was it was pretty hard we talked to Ken up front and we said look we're an entrepreneurial company. We need creative autonomy over what we do because if we just end up doing work for hire for you guys, it's going to lose the spark. Right. And he got that because Ken was an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and it it worked great with Sierra. I mean, I, I don't know what it would be like if you got acquired by more of a shark-like company or something, but with Sierra, it was fantastic. And so I give him a lot of credit because he understood. And we did great for them. We made them lots of money, and, um, and hopefully he, you made lots of money too. We you know. we did we did good. Yeah, yeah we did good. But uh, it was uh, it was a win win. It was definitely a win win. And uh, I really liked working with Ken a lot and Sierra. It was really good really good times. And emotionally, when we sold, I had to sort of let go of the label a little bit, you know. Um, I recently sold a division of one of my companies. Oh, how was that, that for I, you? Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I had been doing it since I had been working on that since about '97. Uh huh. And uh, so yeah, it was like it was like uh, I don't know, selling off a child. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's like you know, that. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess the way I started to feel about it was you don't really own anything. I mean, in, in the long run with history and everything, you, you own, uh, you're still the author of what you do, even mm -hmm. if, they, if they buy the company. So um, it worked, it worked work really well. And then they were able to, to put the funding and the marketing and the distribution behind our, our games, so they actually sold really well. That's cool. So it, it, was, it was a win. So our, our games got out more. It was yeah. a win, yeah. So uh, what's in the future for you? Um, I, I mean, I know you're working on a game that you can't talk uh -huh. about, but you know, th you may have plans farther out than that. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it's so I took some time off after I left Dynamics and uh, got back in the industry about three years ago, um, and uh, just bring myself back up to speed with all the disruption going on in the space with. Uh, you know, retail channels is, is 
totally different now. It's all free. You want to go free to play on the internet. So yeah, um, the retail up. channels may be going away. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, or has a different role to play. Or yeah, so um, uh, we're we're gonna stay small. There's a size that I like. We're about eight eight developers right now. Um, we're committed to having a meaningful work environment, you know, where we believe in what we're doing and we enjoy work, uh, staying in business, um, um, making great games, and I think the last one's being super successful financially. Oh, I mean, if, sounds if, all good if to that, me. If yeah. that follows, that's okay, but it's not the, our first goal. Right. We yeah. Want, we want to make great games. We my my first goal doing. is always success. Uh huh. But that's measured in so many different ways. It's not necessarily measured by dollars. That's good. So, yeah. 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 That's good. Well, Damon, I really appreciate you talking All with right. me about this. Uh, really fun to meet somebody who I, <laughs> you know, played games when I was a kid. So, yeah. Well, well thanks I'm a, lot. a fan. All right. Thanks yeah, a lot. Thank you. Everyone defines our lives and everything we do we're alive. I know we'll be all right because we're here.